Hey, in this video I will cover electronic product regulations in the EU. So, we're going to look into ROHS, LVD, EMC, RED, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of acronyms here, Echo Design, Labeling, C Documentation, Lab Testing, so yeah, it's going to be quite a bit, so let's just dive in. ROHS, that's number one, and the most basic one in, in the sense it's easy to understand. ROHS restricts heavy metals in electronic components and solder, okay, and applies to all electronic products. Anything from a quartz movement used in watches to kitchen appliances or even electric vehicles as an importer okay um or an exporter for that matter, ROS is fairly easy to deal with in the sense that it really comes down to making sure that your supplier or if you're a factory that you are only using r o h s components this cannot be taken for granted. So when you communicate with your supplier, you need to specifically instruct them to only use ROHS components, okay? Nothing else. They need to buy ROHS components which are produced separately, okay? You can have one component supplier that make the same component in two versions, ROHS and non-ROHS, okay? Meaning that it contains excessive, like, contains these heavy metals and also plasticizers above the set limits. Okay, um, l the low voltage directing, LVD, this really comes down to electrical safety and it covers everything with an input voltage uh, 50 to 1000 AC and 75 to 1500 DC, so anything you plug into a power socket is covered by LVD and this can be quite tricky. Some importers make the assessment that, okay, I'm buying this electronic widget with an input voltage of, say, 5 volts, and they make the assumption that, okay, it's not, it's not in this span, right? But the AC adapter has a, a, a input voltage within this span, meaning that it's the AC adapter that needs to comply in that case. My recommendation, given that lab testing is quite expensive, 1500, 2000, something like that, um, or even more when it comes to LVD related testing. So my suggestion, most of our customers, is actually to buy a brand name AC adapter. Okay, EMC, electromagnetic compatibility, and basically it comes down to um, that products should not interfere with other electronic equipment in the area. And the way this is done from a technical perspective differs a lot. Um, some products are actually considered to be, um, let's say, they have a very low uh, electromagnetic um, impact uh, on other devices like, like watches, and classified as inherently benign equipment. Um, but if you take, say, a huge um, LED billboard, that's a different story. That Something like that can actually uh, disrupt radio communications, uh, disrupt, um, disrupt other electronics on a, yeah, in a much more severe way. So you can say that EMC, it, it does apply to most electronic products. Uh, unless they're classified as benign equipment, okay? Then it's also RED, or Radio Equipment Directive, which covers basically anything with wireless communication, so Wi-Fi, enabled devices, Bluetooth, 4G, 5G, RFID, etc., covered by RED. So computers, phones, tablets, smartwatches, Bluetooth devices, um, covered by RED. Okay, Echo Design Directive. The Echo Design Directive applies to lighting products, displays, and also home appliances like washing machines, refrigerators, and so on. And you may also need to use a standardized energy label, like this one. <coughs> All right, labeling requirements. Now, the directives or regulations that I showed you or briefed you on, they will require the CE mark. The CE mark is, is, is mandatory by extension. So it's... Now, another thing I want to mention actually before I 
go on is that when it comes to these directives and regulations, each of which requires the CE mark, um, one or more may apply. Okay, so you got a smartwatch, for example. You you have to comply with uh, RED and ROHS, but perhaps not LVD. Okay, so they are they they add on top of each other. So it's not that one excludes the other. Just want to make that clear. Now they all require the CE mark, and it's basically a compliance mark telling the consumer and the authorities that okay, this product is compliant with all regulations that may apply to it okay that in turn depends on a variety of things like the input voltage uh, if it has wireless communications um, yeah and so on right you also need uh, something called a we symbol and also product traceability that's basically a batch ID we have more content about that on the website C documentation so by extension you also need to create something called a declaration of conformity it's basically a self-issued document uh, where you state or certify that the product is uh, compliant with certain uh, regulations and, and that you follow certain uh, EN standards you can learn more about the DOC on, on our website in the knowledge base you also need a user manual that includes certain items you need a technical file which could involve, f at least for electronics, PCB schematics, circuit diagrams, bill of materials as a component list, CAD files, and, and also firmware. Um, yeah, so it's quite extensive. And lab test reports. It's it basically always needed to add a lab test report, uh, a third party issued lab test report. And the reason is that you take something like LVD, low voltage directive. Basically, what it does is that it explains general guidelines or, well, requirements is a better word, I guess. Requirements concerning electrical safety, okay? That's why, well, if you buy a, say, CE marked charger, well, okay, assuming it's from a, 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 a reputable brand, and like Sony or Samsung or something like that. That's why it doesn't explode, okay? So it's, it's not magic. There's a lot of engineering and, and, and compliance work that goes into this, but you also need to verify that the product, okay, is compliant. And that's where lab testing comes in. You send it uh, to a third party, uh, could be Chima, SGS, Intertech, TUV, UL, and then they do testing according to the requirements outlined in LVD and also according to the corresponding EN or IE, uh, e, IEC standards, okay? And based on that, they can then issue a lab test report that you can then show that, okay, my product is compliant. So yeah, that's, um, that's the basics of electronics compliance in the EU. Just scratch, scratching the surface here. If you want to learn more, uh, go to compliancegate.com slash free and get a free account on our product compliance information platform. And you can also subscribe.